And the filling has begun. <laughs> Just pumping some rainwater out of a drum at the moment. There's not much there. Gonna have to top it up with tap water. We've got to get more storage drums for the uh, guttering in this roof. It's been raining all day. I should, in theory, I should have more than enough to fill this up, but not at the moment. A bit of swarf floating on it, steel. Cool. As usual, I'm going to get a couple more, another box or something tomorrow. I'm not going to run it overnight, not with an unproven power supply. <laughs> Anyone for a dip? Make a nice pull. It lined it out properly and took that anode plate out. <laughs> Bug zap is going nuts. Got plenty of bugs tonight. I dragged this thing in from the cold. Put it back together again. Mm, a few dead ones in the tray. Well, we've got two pounds of bicarb soda mixed in there for now. And this is going to be my power supply. Uh, this MIG welder's got more than a few problems with it, but the transformer still works. I know it needs wire feed repair, and um, uh, what was the other problem? Needs a new handset and everything, pretty much. So I'm just going to use the transformer for now. I won't ruin it. I'll eventually get a new handpiece for it and uh, fix this power feed. But for now I'm just going to use the DC transformer out of it. It goes up to 120 amps. And change that with this, so I'll try and limit it to about 50 amps. Put the amp meter on it and make sure it's right. Alright, got a few covers off. There's the main rectifier in the back there, that's good. Bit of control circuitry. This thing still does work. I tried it in no gas mode with normal gas type wire that's on the spool, and well, the transformer worked. Didn't get any good welds out of it, but that's what you get when you don't use flux core wire. There's the main drive motor, which needs a bit of attention. But no, it looks pretty good. All copper transformers, they're not alloy ones. Uh, main rectifier. It's a good one. It's gonna, it really is a pretty small welder compared with this normal MIG spool. <laughs> that's what we use at work, Sandvik. Uh, stainless steel ER316 LSI. It's good stuff. It's also a really high-tech welder as well. Things are challenged to program in itself, let alone try and weld with it. Alright, it's time for a test piece. I'm going to use the flat belt pulley as my test. Uh, that's my negative lead attached to the top of the bolt. Screwed into the grub screw hole. It isn't exactly central. That grub screw hole is actually quite off centre. That's the way they made it. ready to run. The speed controller on the driver's blower decided to work so I'm going to use that to keep the welder cool. Just blowing a gentle breeze through it. Just put a bit of tin over here to direct it straight down past the transformers. Oh this is nice and safe. I'm uh, just going to run the leads in and connect up the amp meter. Use one of these. So that should work quite well. I'll go up the top through the amp meter coil and then down to the anode. Uh, the negative lead just plugs straight into the welder. Get in there. Cool. 
Okay, now one thing to note when building a system this big, not only do you have a hydrogen generation problem, I mean small tanks generate a little bit of hydrogen, but something like this, if it was used in a completely confined environment, well, yeah, let's just say you could turn a light switch on one day and blow your shed into a million pieces. That's why I'm always going to have the rear main fan on, and I'll leave the doors a bit of a jar open. Not to mention there's gaps all the way around the roof lining and under the tin. So hydrogen can definitely escape and it won't build up in this shed. But for safety's sake, just be very careful when running big systems indoors. If I had an outdoor gib crane or something like that, then it would probably be outside right now. But right now this is the only crane I've got. Uh, the other thing is the lifting block and everything is going to be part of the negative side of the system along with the tank and the crane because the crane's already touching the tank pretty much so that's all going to be negative side uh, I also want to protect the tank from rust by running trickle current through it anyway so that's going to have a lead coming off here to the tank it's pretty well insulated with the pool cover material so there shouldn't be much current drained by the tank itself but there will be a little bit I would like to try and isolate the lifting block and everything but I don't know if it's possible. The other issue is that the weld is part of that negative side so I might actually have to insulate it. I'll try and pry the crane over a little bit. At least just keep keep the negative side of the circuit just to the tank. Stuff a bit of radiator hose under here. You try and limit, limit your current drains and possible shorts. So we are dealing with dangerous current and voltage levels now that we're using a welder. 12 volts DC generally won't hurt you and 24 volts will give you a bit of a tingle but we're dealing with like 75 volts here so this is dangerous current territory ok we're ready to go just did a couple of tests using different amp meters and coils and I can't get it to read anything above 20 amps even when it's dead short I've shorted it out on the bolt a couple of times and it doesn't go above 20 I'm guessing these amp meters only work on alternating current not direct current bit of a shame, I was hoping I'd be able to see what kind of amps I was running. But either way, we'll turn it on and see what it does. The blower's working. It's power. Yep. Barely moved. Definitely got bubbles coming off the workpiece though. That's a good sign. Leave it a while and see what it does. Thanks for watching.